Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am Game Master Bloodworth, and as you can see by the graphics, uh, I'm, I'm going to do a little video here uh, talking about some uh, tips and tricks and a question that I am posing. Should you require foraging in your game? So, um, you know, I'm, I'm driving to the grocery store this morning and, and, you know, I started thinking about this. I was like, wow, we have a lot of different supplies that we need to pick up. Um, after the holiday weekend and we had relatives over and everything, they, they basically ate us out of house and home. And, um, you know, and then previously we were tied up with COVID, so there wasn't much sh shopping going on then either. And we, we just needed some like really, really bare essentials. And, um, and it got me thinking, I was like, when, when an adventure party is going to do a, a wilderness travel or a, you know, a, a, a long dungeon crawl or whatnot, um, they need these various supplies. And, you know, how do you handle that? Or maybe even how should you handle that? Or, um, or should you even bother with it? So that's where I'm going to go with this here. Um, you can probably already tell that, you know, I'm leaning towards that you should, but, um, but let me kind of further build that out. So perhaps it's just my perception, but I see a lot of, uh, game developers, um, you know, whether within the OSR and, and elsewhere as well, there's, there's a, a push I'm going to say towards returning to the hex crawl and, uh, Hex crawling obviously requires a lot of uh, a lot of travel, a lot of overland travel, and foraging is something that the player character party groups are going to have to um, are going to have to consider. Right, uh, the the farther they're traveling, they have to look to see if we're we're in a deep wilderness. Uh, where are we going to? find water, find food, find shelter, find uh, the materials we need to start a campfire and such. And, and I think that there are many different ways as a game master you can handle this. Um, one way is that you just hand wave it, right? And you say, oh yeah, you just find whatever you're looking for, um, which I would not recommend. Uh, and I'll give the reasons why I like a much more fuller experience in uh in foraging um so you could do that you can roll on various random tables or whatever and say all right well you find this this and this and or uh you can have the player characters make skill checks that are either appropriate skills that they have maybe they have some background skills and things like hunting or even foraging you know specifically foraging and so you can have them just make those rolls and if they're successful they find whatever they're looking for <clears throat> you can also um you can also role play it out which i really do recommend um it's it's a you know it, that way it's not just you're making a whole bunch of dice rolls you're looking at the result and it's like bang you have what you're looking for kind of thing i i think that there's there's the opportunities to create um new situations that you you as a game master weren't anticipating and the players weren't anticipating either right they can they can go through and they're they're looking to go hunting let's say uh to get some uh you know to get some uh, deer or whatever and they come across this and then just you in your improvisation you know improvisation uh, you're going to say well you see a um you do you see a deer that has been slain and there's a you know there's a, a creature already uh harvesting it and you've never seen this kind of creature before you know and uh the creature notices you you notice the creature and now you're you know you're engaged with either trying to get the deer uh from the creature maybe you're ignoring it you're you're trying to um you know, evade it because it's chasing after you or whatever, or you have a combat, you know, and, and now you've created a situation uh, during the act of foraging 
that the players are going to have to make choices with their characters. And um, it might also lead to, you know, role playing and, uh, you know, a social interaction. Maybe they see another another hunter, a human, you know, a human or a demi-human or, or whatever, that now they've encountered somebody else. <coughs> Maybe they'll have a conversation. Maybe the person will be very wary of them and think that they're going to uh, try to steal their kill. Um, or maybe they'll say, hey, I've they help you out or do whatever. But requiring the, for, the act of foraging, I, I think, does open itself up to uh, many different opportunities for encounters, for role-playing, and for the players interacting with the environment that they're in. They're interacting with the world that they're in, more so than just dice rolls and, and reading results, but uh, they're actually making decisions about their actions. And, uh, and then they, they might be pursuing new lines of investigation uh, that they wouldn't have if you just hand waved uh, the fact that they're finding water and finding food and whatnot. Um, the other component that I think is important to include in here is the you want to set in the minds of the players for their characters that if they run out of water, that's a new hazard that they're going to face or run out of food or run out of uh, materials for campfires or whatnot, that they have to now start worrying about finding these things and it adds an element of um, an element uh, an element of urgency and pacing um, it, I think it will encourage the players to kind of pick up the pace uh, pace if they're you know lollygagging about <coughs> and so I just like the fact that it does increase that level of urgency in order to um, in order to keep the action going um, to keep what their what their intent is uh, you know whether it's to travel from point A to point B well let's not dilly dally let's get it done as quickly as possible because we only have three days of travel rations and this is a five day trip and at some point, we're going to have to forage and find a source of food and water and shelter along the way. Um, there's other components to this as well. You don't only have to require foraging in, you know, forests and, and natural wildernesses, right? You can, you can require foraging if they're in a, you know, a natural cave complex and, and what are some of the things that they're going to find in the cave complex? Like what, what happens if they, you know, there's usually water in caves, but you know, what if there, uh, what if there's no real food supply? Like what are they going to use for food, you know, in that kind of a certain, you know, situation, maybe they get trapped inside a natural cave, uh, feature and they're, you know, they're a day in, you know, it's like almost like, uh, you know, journey to the center of the earth kind of thing. Um, are, are they going to have to kill small, small spiders or scorpions or, or centipedes or bats or whatever and start eating those things, all right, in order to survive? And you could do the same thing if they're in, let's say, a mega dungeon and they're, they're trapped in this mega dungeon. Where are they going to find food and water sources? Um, you know, perhaps they'll have to, you know, let's say they're in a massive, uh, you know, a massive goblin lair. All right. Do they, they might have to drink and eat what goblins left behind. All right. And that might be some pretty awful stuff, but uh, it's required sustenance. So I think it's really important to uh, require that your player characters in your group are, are foraging for things uh, when, when necessary, when they're not immediately 
in, in the vicinity of a, a village or a town or, or even a city. Um, I think it's, it gives and breathes life into the world. It makes them feel like they are, um, they're a part of something uh, much, much bigger than themselves. And uh, it creates the, um, the necessity uh, for, you know, food and water and shelter and, uh, you know, and temperature control in, in, you know, in extreme weather conditions and such. Um, it creates that sense of urgency and that, um, that hazard if they don't uh, have access to those things. So, um, yeah, it, it's just a, it was just something that struck my mind. And, and, you know, as I see more and more systems really starting to, um, you know, make a return, I, I, will, I will argue, uh, to things like hex crawls and such, I think it's something that we need to, uh, you know, get back to and, and remember. Um, I remember back when I first started playing, I mean, we had to have all of those adventure gear things. I mean, it was, you would never go adventuring without the 10 foot pole and the, you know, oil flasks and holy water and iron spikes and cow traps and, and, you know, 50 feet of rope and a grappling hook. And you, you, you wanted to have all of this stuff. And then your, your, your travel rations and everything, everything was, was so detailed as to what we felt was required to even consider going on an adventure all right and um i i don't recall like when we first started and we were you know 11 12 years old whether we were doing the whole foraging thing but once we got a hold of once we were in ad and first edition yes then absolutely because especially with the wilderness, um, the wilderness guide and the dungeoneers guides, um, those were certainly uh, front and center uh, secondary skills that your characters could have, and we definitely used them at that point there. So, um, so I, I think it's important. I think that you should require foraging in your game. Uh, obviously, that's just my opinion, and you're welcome to accept it or you know, or, uh, or reject it uh, as you will. Uh, but I'd love to hear what you think about it. So please remember to jump in the comments there and, and say, Hey, uh, give me some ideas of some systems that really do it very well. I see a lot of systems do it, but I've never seen any that really stood out like, wow, this is the, this is the best one I've ever seen kind of thing. So, uh, if you have some recommendations for systems that, just handle foraging better than any others, then please feel free to put that in the comment section. I look forward to reading it and looking into it. And um, as always, I look forward to seeing you on a gaming screen or at a gaming table sometime soon. Uh, thanks for joining. Remember to like and subscribe and to comment and to share. Do all of those things there. Uh, really helps the channel grow and uh, the more growth just means the more reaching out that the channel will get and uh, and the more people that will come in here and give me suggestions and comments and and things like that of uh, things that I can look at and uh, things that they would like to see. So um, as always, have a great rest of your day and take care.